Hey everybody, Jeffrey Way here. In today's video quick tip, we're going to be discussing structural pseudoclasses in CSS. It sounds really creepy, and to some extent it is, but once you understand it, I promise it'll make perfect sense. So if you've ever seen nth child and then 4n plus 7 and you had no idea what that meant, it's really confusing at first, but then the way I'm going to show it to you, I promise it'll make perfect sense to you. All right, so we are going to start and we'll work in Coda today. I've created an unordered list and it just contains lots of images. That's it. So here you can see all our images. So let's do some quick prep work and we'll say get the list items and begin by loading them to the left and disable the list style like so and now let's set up a common thing you might come across so let's say the unordered list has a width of 860 pixels and I'm going to set a background color just so we can see the behind and because the list items are floated let's make sure we clear those floats or contain those floats so we'll do that refresh and let's also set the margins to auto to center it on the page. All right, so that looks good. Now, the reason these images appear to be centered as well is because two things. One, an unordered list by default will apply some padding left, and list items by default, according to the browser, will apply some margin left. Okay, so now that looks just fine. If you want, you can also add some margin bottom of 30 pixels for some breathing room. So what we want here is for these images to take up all the available space. So I want them evenly divided with the fourth one all the way over here and the left one all the way up here. All right, so how can we figure this out? Well, we have 860 pixels wide of real estate, and I know that each one of these images is 200 pixels. So we have two, four, six, 800 pixels. So that leaves 860 minus 800, we have 60 pixels worth of padding to divide between four images. So 60 divided by 4 is 15. All right, well, let's try that out. So let's overwrite this and we'll say 0, 15 pixels on the right, 30 pixels on the bottom, and 0 on the left. It's a shorthand. Refresh the page, and that does look better, but the problem is we divided 60 pixels into 4. So in this case, each one of these images has 15 pixels, but we really don't want the fourth one to have any padding at all. So with that in mind, let's recalculate. We want to divide 60 pixels between these three images instead. So 60 divided by 3 is 20. All right, well, let's try that. But now, if I refresh the page, well, now we have another problem. Because we divided the 60 pixels between the third image, we didn't think about that fourth image. So how could we target this? Uh, there's been a lot of ways to do it in the past. Some people, if you're working maybe with a server-side solution or something, they'll, they'll do a bit of PHP or something and say, if this... Um, is, is the fourth item in the bunch or every four and then apply a class of of last or something like that and that's pretty lame so let's use uh, CSS structural pseudo classes so what I can do here is what do we need I need the fourth one every fourth image to have no margin at all so rather than adding a class I can say li nth child and I'm going to get four and let's keep it at that for now and we'll say margin right is zero so now, if I refresh, that first one is going to be fixed because we targeted them. We said, go to the list items and get the fourth one. One, two, three, four, and take away the margin. But now we got to get all the other ones. Well, that's what n is for, and that means every four nth child. So now, refresh the page, and that fixes it, and we have everything divided really nicely. So that's the basic way of using nth child. But what about all those 2n plus 5 and things like that? Okay, well, let's say within this set, you also need to uh, provide accents for maybe, let's say, every single item that's on the left side should have no padding or should have an outline or something. Just for this situation, let's apply an outline. So we want every single one of these on the left to have an outline. All right, well, let's do the first one. li nth child, and we'll say 1. And that'll be the very first one. And we'll say outline, one pixel, solid, red. Refresh, and now that has been outlined. Okay, but this is where it gets hard. How could we do every single one? It's not like four. So you might think one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going to do five in. See if that works for you. 
No, that's not going to work because we totally skipped the first one. And then it doesn't do these because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But then at that point, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it just gets all messed up, as you can see right here. And so the key to working with these kinds of classes is work from right to left. You work backwards. That's kind of confusing, isn't it? So let's first go, what do we have to have? All right, we have to have this very first one. So I'll say 1. And then I'm going to work backwards. So I'll go plus. And now, from the 1, how many do I need? So 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 in. And then if I try it again, 1, 2, 3, 4. That works. 1, 2, 3, 4. It'll work. So now I say 4 in plus 1. And that's all there is to it. And now, every single one of those has been selected. So let's try it again. Now we want to select every single one of these in the third column. All right, how would you do it if you want pause and figure it out? The key is once again work right to left. So we know we want the third item. Okay, and then how many after that? One, two, three, four. Four again. One, two, three, four. So four in plus three will select everything in the third column, as you can see right there. Isn't that so much easier once you learn that working? right to left makes it a lot easier to understand. Now you can also do minus. So if we did something like 5n minus 1, what this is going to do is it's a little bit different. If I come back and refresh the page, that's not going to select that very first item because you're doing negative. So it would do 5n minus 1. So it's going to select 5 minus 1 is 4, the fourth one. And then from that point, it's going to continue on with 5. So 4 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. Now, if you want to do even, you have two options. You could do 2n, and that would be even. If you want to do odd, you could do 2n plus 1, and that would start at the first one and then take every odd one. But you can also do things like even and odd, little helper. So even is a keyword, and then you could do odd at the same time if you would prefer. If you want to select every third one, you'd start like so. Okay, so that'll do it for today's video quick tip. I hope that made these confusing nth child issues much more easy to understand. Just remember, work right to left. All right, I'm Jeffrey Way. For more tips and tutorials, please subscribe to NetTouch. I'll see you later. Bye.